Good morning, language arts. Today you guys are going to be practicing for your reading assessment, which you will be taking this Friday. Um, you guys are going to need quite a few things this morning, so go ahead and take a look at the screen and take these items out. You're going to need a pen or a pencil. You're going to need three different colors. Those can be highlighters, markers, pencils, whatever, whatever it may be. You need three different colors. You need the actual article. You're either going to take the pro side or the con side, and then your partner is going to take whatever side you did not choose. And then you should have a rubric, which has a graphic organizer on the back of it, and a response sheet, which is also double-sided. So those are all the items that you need out today. Um, I'm going to walk you through what you guys are doing today, and then we will talk about what that looks like on Friday. You guys will notice that the items that you have in front of you today are very, very similar looking to the ones that you are going to see on Friday. So I hope that you take your time on this practice. I hope that you um, put your best effort towards it because any questions you run into um, or anything that you're unclear on, if you guys have any questions at all, I want you to message me on Canvas. Um, I'll have access to that in the next couple of days and I'll get back to you and kind of clear up any questions you might have before you take the real assessment. But what you're going to be doing today is practicing for that assessment. There are three different steps that you're going to complete with a partner. So with a partner, there are two different articles, and I'll show you those first, I guess. They're both answering the question, are U.S. recycling programs too costly? I chose this article because a lot of you guys actually are writing about recycling in your argument essay, so I thought it would be nice to give you an extra source. Both the pro article and the con article are answering this question. So the pro article says, yes, recycling programs are too costly. One partner is going to read through this article. The con article says, no, it's not too expensive and we need to recycle more. So the other partner is going to read through this article. Both of them are one page, double-sided, not too long um, for you guys to read through. So step one, you and your partner are going to choose which side you're going to read. You can choose pro, your partner can choose con, or vice versa. Then you're going to complete the first step. Once you divide up your articles, you're going to annotate them. You're going to annotate the pro article, your partner is going to annotate the con article, or vice versa. You're going to use those three different colors for your annotations. Color number one is for marking the author's claim. Color number two is for marking the author's reasons. And color number three is for marking the author's use of evidence. With your pen or your pencil, I also want you to mark any examples of bias, stereotyping, extra examples, humor, whatever else the author uses to distinguish his or her article. What are some things that the author does to make their argument unique? That is step one, actually annotating the article. Step two, you're going to take your annotations just like we've practiced in class and on the back side of this rubric, so go ahead and flip this page over, you guys will see a graphic organizer. It looks pretty similar um, to the one that we've been using in class, but I'd give you even more direction on this organizer to help you get even more organized. So after you annotate the articles, after the articles are all marked up in your three different colors, you've marked the claim, the reasons, the evidence, the bias, the stereotyping, you're going to come to this graphic organizer. This is step two. In the graphic organizer, for the author's claim, you're going to write out the author's claim, their argument, their, state, their statement, their position, um, the so what of the article that you read. Remember, the claim should be in your own words, so you're going to write that out here. Second step, you're going to outline three of the author's reasons. There may be more than three reasons in the article that you read, but I want you to choose three. So for each of these reasons, you're going to fill it out this way. First, you're going to answer the question. Notice that we're kind of using ace as we go along here. First, you're going to answer the question, what is reason number one? You're going to write that here in your own words. Then I want you to circle either strong or weak. Is this a strong reason or is this a weak reason? Is it reliable? Is it logical? Does it support the claim? All of those things would make it strong. If it doesn't make sense or it is worded unprofessionally or whatever it may be, it's probably going to be a weaker reason. 
Then I want you to give me an example of that reason. I want you to cite the actual article, the actual quote that shows the first reason. And last but not least, I want you guys to explain how is that reason strong or how is that reason weak. You're going to do this three times for three different reasons. Then you're going to jump down and do the same thing for evidence. Please notice that the evidence and the reasons should go together. That's why they're in the same column here. So reason number one and evidence number one should go together. They should support each other. So for reason number one, you're going to look and see, does the author use any evidence, any facts, any information to back up that reason? So evidence for reason number one, I'm going to decide, is the evidence strong or is the evidence weak? I want you to circle one of those. Then I want you to cite the article. Give me a quote directly from the text that shows evidence for reason number one. And again, I want you to explain how is the evidence strong, or if it's not, how is the evidence weak? You're going to do that for all three reasons as well. Last but not least for the graphic organizer, all you need to do is find one example of bias or one example of stereotyping. Again, I want you to tell me, is it strong or weak? Remember, bias is not always a bad thing. Sometimes too much bias takes away from the argument, but a lot of times bias also makes the author more credible. We learn about the author's experiences, maybe the author's education. So you need to decide, is the bias strong or weak? And then again, you need to explain how it's strong or how it's weak. That graphic organizer is step two. So once you've marked your article, once you've outlined your article, you're gonna actual, actually evaluate <laughs> the argument of your article. Basically, you're gonna be answering the question, is the argument strong or is the argument weak? And as you answer that question, you have to explain why using textual evidence. So, on the real assessment, some of you guys might challenge yourself to write out the, this answer to this question completely on your own. I break it down into smaller questions for you, but today, you guys are gonna have the fill in the blank version. You might choose to use the fill in the blank version on the real assessment on Friday. You might choose to um, challenge yourself and fill in just the lined space. The choice is yours. But either version that you get, you're going to get this bulleted list that kind of outlines this question for you. It helps you walk through the question. First you're going to answer, is the author's claim strong or weak? Explain why. That is this first section here like we've practiced together already. The second question asks you, is the author's reasoning strong or weak? That is this next section here that we've already practiced together with the cheer articles as well. The third question asks you, is the author's use of evidence strong or weak? That's this next section here. Then it's going to ask you about the author's bias or stereotyping, and then it's going to ask you if the author does anything else to distinguish his or her perspective. Does he use humor? Does he use pictures? Does he use maps? Whatever it may be. And you're going to explain how does that strengthen or weaken the argument. So today for the practice, you're just going to fill this out. You're going to do each of these steps with the article that you choose. So if I choose the pro article, I'm going to annotate the pro article, I'm going to outline the pro article, and then I'm going to evaluate the pro article. My partner is going to annotate the con article, outline the con article, and then evaluate the con article. So you're working with a partner, but you're really doing your own work on your own article. You're just working with a partner to kind of see both sides. The rubric that you guys see on your rubric today is the same exact one that you're going to see on the assessment on Friday. Half of the points that you can earn on this is based on you evaluating the author's argument. Is it strong? Is it weak? Explain why. Ten of these 40 points you need to identify one piece of bias or stereotyping. And then the last one is author's purpose or as we've been calling it in class, author's choices. Is there anything extra the author is doing? to show their perspective or their purpose. Uh, one thing I want to remind you guys before I let you get to work is every time that you see this shows, remember that is your E from ACE. You're going to answer the question, you're going to cite an example that should come directly from the article, and then you're going to explain that example in three to five sentences. 
Guys, you're gonna be practicing something today that we've practiced over and over together today. And then your assessment on Friday is going to be the formal version where you need to show me everything you know. So please practice doing that today. I am going to grade your pra practice, sorry, as well as your final reading assessment. So please put your best effort into this one. Prepare yourself for your reading assessment. If you have any questions, and I'm going to show you this on my screen as well. If you have any questions, you guys can go to Canvas. And you can send me a message if there's anything you're confused about. If you have any questions before the actual assessment, I will be able to access that from Canvas. So if you guys go to Canvas, whoops, sorry. If you go to Canvas and you go to the left-hand side of yours, if you click on Inbox, it will let you write a message to me asking any questions that you um, have regarding your reading assessment. Um, a lot of you guys message me there when you forget your homework, as you guys could see from the past screen. Um, but if you have any questions about it, please message me. I'll answer those before you take your real assessment on Friday. But put your best effort towards picking a partner, doing this assignment well, preparing yourself for your reading assessment, and you guys should do just fine on Friday. We've practiced this over and over again. You guys are pros by now. I'm very, very confident about you guys going into this reading assessment, and I hope you feel the same way. If you have any questions, please ask your sub or Mrs. Collins or Mrs. Sapp. Um, and as I said, if you need to message me for any further questions before the official reading assessment on Friday, which is 30% of your grade, just a reminder, um, please feel free to message me. I hope you guys are having a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Good luck.